Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy he name bless the lord oh our souls and all that is within us bless his holy name he has some great things he has done great things in our house. He has done great things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Bless his holy King of glory, maker of heaven and earth, Emmanuel, the soon coming king, we lift up your name high and above every other name. We thank you even as we declare that this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness over Powerhouse in the last two years. Thank you, Lord God, for the lives that have been transformed. Thank you for the souls that have been saved. Thank you for all PHH followers on all our social media platforms. Thank you, Lord God, for our own lives and those of our families. We ascribe all glory, all honor, and adoration unto you. Lord Jesus, we lift up our second year anniversary celebration unto you. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you will take the center stage. Glorify yourself. And may everyone who will be watching this broadcast at some point later, for everyone that will be joining us to celebrate, may you all experience Jesus like never before. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for in your name and your name alone have we prayed. Amen. Amen. Hello everyone, we are so excited, we are thrilled about today, our hearts are filled with so much joy because it's our second year anniversary, hallelujah, amen. The Lord has been so faithful and we remain thankful. And on this note, we want to specially welcome you to Powerhouse R, where we create a soaking room experience to worship God in and unconventional, non-traditional, and non-religious manner. We are non-titled ministers, but ordinary citizens of heaven who just love to worship God and to fish souls for him. Hallelujah. We meet virtually every Sunday between 3 and 4 p.m. U.S. slash Canadian Eastern Time. And we are so confident that as we worship and adore our God, he will draw souls unto himself. Hallelujah. Souls, precious souls that have been destined for the kingdom. And he will grant us our heart desires. And as we worship along with us today, we pray that you will tangibly encounter God's presence. Please, can you do us a favor by just, just spread the love of God and follow, like, share, and subscribe to our social media channels. We're on Facebook, Instagram. Twitter, and YouTube. You can all visit our website at phhworld.com, phhworld.com, where you can read more about the ministry. So come on, let's enjoy God's presence together. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Oh, wow. PHA, she's two years old already. We thank God. Glory be to God. And again, we want to welcome all our viewers from all over the world to the PHA second anniversary. Yeah. Hallelujah. God has been faithful. And as we celebrate the second year, we want to give glory to God for keeping PHA in the palm of his hands. We thank God for always being there for each one of us, every step of the way. Glory to God forevermore. The past year has been good to us. God has been so good. Souls have been one. God has kept each and every one of us in his will and his purpose. Hallelujah. And we believe that as we enter the second year, we count God's blessing in our lives, in PHH for every member over the past year, and we see that God is great. So many organizations have started, but did not survive. But we thank God that it has pleased him to keep PHH. And we want to believe God for focus, for reset, and for strength for the work ahead of us. So we want to declare that it is certain that God will meet us all at the, our expectation for the years ahead of PHH. We commit our aspiration, our goals, our vision, and our mission to the hands of God. And we know that it will manifest in the years to come in the name of Jesus. So my job this afternoon is to tell us about the mission, the vision of PHH. Hallelujah. So who are we? What is PHH? Powerhouse Hour. We are not titled ordinary citizens of heaven who are called to the kingdom of God to worship and adore our God in a non-religious, non-traditional and unconventional manner to share the love of Christ and win souls. He promised us, he gave us a promise and his promise to us is that in obedience to God's commission, he promised to draw souls unto himself and give us gifts without even asking. So we are just a vessel. We're just calling people. He is the one that is drawing the souls to, to himself. And our foundational scripture is John 15, verse 16. It says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I have appointed and placed you, purposefully planted you, so that you will go and be a fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruits will remain and be lasting so that whatever you ask of the father in my name he will give unto us hallelujah that is his promise to us and our mission statement is to win souls for the kingdom every nation touched every heart changed, and none left behind. How do we do it? We create a Holy Spirit soaking room experience that is an act of evangelism to share the love of Christ and to win souls. We also try to bridge the gap, feed the saint, and bring hope, restoration, and joy to all men. Hallelujah. We have a few guiding principles. So what are the powerhouse guiding principles? It is powerhouse is a community of non-title, ordinary citizens of heaven, like I said before, who continually worship God and speak of who he is. PHH is an international, a global, interdenominational Christian fellowship designed to fulfill the following purposes to introduce men and women across the globe to Jesus Christ by sharing his good news of salvation to all souls. Secondly, to empower men and women through studying the scripture, Christian books and sharing amongst ourselves so that we may discover our true identity in Jesus, be filled with the love of Christ and the fullness of God and be equipped in our God's given gift 
to fulfill our destiny and life purposes. So it's not by accident that you are viewing us, that you are watching us this afternoon. We know that God has orchestrated this and we just want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy this second year anniversary with us. God bless you as you do so. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, this is our second year anniversary for Powerhouse Hour. And we've prepared a short uh, skit for you titled The Call. And this is based on two passages in the New Testament where Jesus called the disciples to follow him and do the work with him. Uh, we'll give you a short insight in how we came about uh, joining this vision and we pray that Holy Spirit will touch you, will speak to you and you too. You will join us and do this work and win souls unto Jesus. Thank you, enjoy. Amen, hallelujah, amen. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shores of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew throwing a net into the water for they fish for a living. Jesus called out to them, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. We see Jesus called people who are businessmen, hardworking, busy making a living. Sister Yabo, you're a very busy accountant. I suppose you are crunching numbers, balancing credits and debits. When Jesus called you? Oh, really? So where were you when Jesus called you? What were you doing, Sayabo? Um, I remember, actually, I remember like it was yesterday. The initial call came in 2006, right? I was at the LCCG Dallas camp attending a minister's conference. We went for lunch in one of the pastor's houses. There, this pastor, he gave a prophecy. And he said that my voice will be heard to the end of the world. Yeah. At that time, it didn't, mean much, it didn't mean much to me. My voice to the end of the world, oof, I didn't think so. But at the time, I was a minister, but that's all it was, right? It wasn't until the later part of 2018 that I started experiencing dryness in all areas of my life. I visited the doctors many times, more than I've done in my entire life. And at that point, I started thinking, hmm, this must be spiritual. It can't be normal, right? So I started checking my life and I started asking God for directions and help to call the long story short. This faithful and wonderful God that we serve sent one of his daughters to wake me up 5.30 a.m. in the morning. I was on the waiting women prayer line. But I switched over because I haven't had from her for a very long time. So I thought, oh no, maybe she needed me for something. Lo and behold, she said, and I'm quoting, while I was doing my meditating and my uh, devotional, the Lord asked me to go talk to you, to remind you, of the assignment he has given to you. Hmm. That was something. This was be 14 years after. Still, I did not get the old picture. So I started asking him for help. I started asking for forgiveness of disobedience to his word. And gradually, gradually in my dreams, he started giving me names of people that were to join in the assignment that he has given unto me. 
Some names I did question, mind you, I did question some names, but I have to be in total obedience. So to the extent that I, did, I couldn't even share with spiritual leaders in my, in my life. I was afraid of the things that I had suffered. So two years ago, we started PHH based on the prophecy and based on God sending another of his daughter to remind me. In short, that's how I came to PHH. That's how I was called and that's how PHH came to be. Oh, wow. Glory to God. And they left their nets at once and followed him. Wow. It takes a lot of faith to mm -hmm. drop everything and mm -hmm. follow Jesus mm -hmm. without discussion, mm -hmm. negotiation, mm -hmm. resistance. And if I was Peter or Andrew, I will ask Jesus to give me a couple of days to pray about it. Oh, and yeah. then I can give him an answer. You always say, you're very right. I myself resisted. I resisted the call that God gave to Powerhouse Hour for many years. Like I narrated, for many reasons, I delayed. But to the glory of God, we started two years ago. Without a doubt, there's power in obeying the calling of God. You know, when I think about the souls who are being saved, who are being transformed on hearing the good news of our Lord Jesus, I am so thankful. I am so thankful that I said yes, that I heeded to the call, you know, because I cannot just imagine how my life would have been without having Jesus Christ in it. Amen. I hear you, Sister Lonke. Well, can you tell us, how did they call you to PHH? Hello. That's interesting. That's interesting. Two years ago, when there was so much uncertainty globally mm -hmm. with the COVID-19 pandemic, we were all homebound at the time. And, you know, this actually enabled me to just stop, pause, and reflect deeply on some on, on certain areas of my life. Mm -hmm. So the invitation, you know, to join PHH for me was just the beginning of, you know, a new phase in my work with God. I believe God called me to PHH at the time that I was really thirsty and it was like finding the missing jigsaw in a puzzle. So I eagerly embraced the call to serve and to be a part of this commission, you know, to win souls for Jesus. Sister Natalie, what about you? What's your own story? I was involved in evangelism a few years prior to Sister Yabo sharing the vision for PHH with me. I came to understand a while ago that sharing my faith is a critical part of being a Christian. I evangelized with a group for two years in Montreal. Then I moved to Ottawa. I looked for another group there, but I didn't find any. And so I was praying for three years for God to connect me again wow. with another group. Then one day, Sister Yabo called me and spoke to me about the vision for PHH, and I knew that this was my personal answer to my prayer. Wow, very interesting. A little further down the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father, Sebede, repairing their nets, and he called them to come too. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. We see in this short passage that Jesus called four fishermen. Hmm. I wonder what it was about fishermen that was so appealing to Jesus. Wow. I think, I think that casting net in the sea to catch fish is an image of the Great Commission. Go into the utmost part of the world and preach the good news to win souls to the kingdom of God. Amen, amen. Jesus came to fish for souls in a way to catch us, you and me, and bring us home back to the Father. And we are grateful to walk in the footsteps of these fishermen and Jesus to fish for souls 
for the glory of the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. So one day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, a great crowd pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Throughout the Bible, we see that God looks for empty things so he can fill them. Empty jars, empty vessels, empty boats. When PHH started two years ago, we had empty but yet available hands and minds to be used by the Lord. We have done everything from scratch with the leading of Holy Spirit. Sunday after Sunday, our broadcast began to take shape. Yes, we did. We did, we did not know what we were doing. We didn't know where we were going. Just like the first disciples though, we followed blindly. We just chose to be in obedience, total obedience, and we went wherever the Spirit of God led us. Sister okay? please, can you run us by what you do in logistics and how you have developed yourself to be able to do the invitations, the flyers, and the slides that you do for PHH? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. I can confidently say that being part of PHH has been a learning curve, mm. a training ground saddled with opportunities to work for God mm. with the gifts he has blessed me with. I love creativity, beauty. I just love planning and organizing. So it wasn't surprising when I became in charge of the logistics in PHH, which involved ensuring the seamless and smooth running of, mm. you know, of the R during mm. our weekly broadcast. I also create the slides which are interjected during the hour to ensure, you know, to enable us to stay on schedule as well as creating a well thought out and well presented fellowship experience for our viewers. In addition, I designed the flyers for our team meetings, PHH invitations, celebration events, other relevant, you know, materials which we use across all our social media platforms. My skills, have been greatly enhanced since I joined the ministry. And I couldn't have achieved this without constantly pushing myself mm. by researching into ways, you know, which could add value to the art. Hmm. I also need to mention, there have been times when I get told of a corrected in love by Sister Yabo. It still even <laughs> happened today, you know, and even vice versa. So, so she too doesn't get, you know, get off easily. But, you know, we take it all in good stride because we believe that iron sharpens iron. And this way we can grow and be better versions of ourselves. Yes, really, iron sharpens iron. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, his owner, to push it into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowd from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper and let down your net to catch some fish. Wow, where it is deeper, that is deep. But mm -hmm. you know, casting the net into the deep is about us going into places where people may usually not go to, where people mm -hmm. may usually not be able to reach for Christ prison yards, hospitals, shelters, to the utmost part of the world. Think about it. Ordinary citizens like you and I, reaching out to the end of the world. Oh, Father, we are so privileged at PHH to reach to the deep for Christ. You know, it, 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 it reminds me of the assignment that God gave. And during the time that we were able to cast our net into the social media. We cannot say thank God for COVID, but COVID is something beautiful. You know, we are able to reach to the end of the corner of the heart. Every nation reached, every heart touched. 
and every soul changed for Christ. He called us at PHH without titles, just ordinary citizens of heaven. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I feel Jesus is calling us in this season to go deeper in him and deeper in this vision he has mm -hmm. given us. May I remind us of our vision? We are non-title, ordinary citizens of heaven yes. who are called to the kingdom of God Amen. to worship and adore Amen. him Amen. in a non-religious, yes. non-traditional, and unconventional manner to share the love of Christ mm. and win souls. Amen, to win souls. Master, Simon replied, we walked all night long and did not catch a thing. Mm. But if you say so, I will let my nets down again. Mm. And this time, their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. Hallelujah. The power of obey Jesus is always followed with blessings and abundance. For me, obedience simply means acting on God's word, obeying without murmuring, without complaining, without grumbling, but obey by surrendering completely to his will. How about you, Sister Natalie? What does obedience mean to you? For me, obedience to God is looking beyond the natural beyond what my eyes can see, and stepping into the supernatural where God is. It's an act of obedience without murmuring and grumbling. Mm -hmm. It is faith in action. And God has made a promise to Powerhouse Hour. Mm -hmm. In obedience to God's commission, he promised to draw souls unto himself mm -hmm. and give us gifts without asking. Mm -hmm. Sister Yabo, what do you think about obedience? Funny enough that both of you should mention about mumbling, not mumbling and not grumbling. You know, for PHH to come alive, obedience had to be in play. I didn't feel qualified. Who will listen? Obeying God completely brought us to where we are today. We cannot receive from God without total obedience, complete obedience. And his instructions to us at PHH, worship and adore me. I, and only I, withdraw the souls to myself. We have to be in complete obedience for him to achieve drawing souls to himself. Sister Joke, over to you. Amen. Amen. For me, obedience to God is the only way to get closer to him. Mm. Know his mind and grow as a person. Mm. Obedience means having an implicit faith in God and totally surrender to his leading. Mm. For he knows the way in the wilderness. Amen. Even when we don't know what we are doing, he knows. It is in obedience that we can bear fruits, fruits that will remain Amen. and last forever. So that whatever we ask of the Father, in Jesus' name, he gives unto us. Amen. Amen. A shout for help brought their partner in the other boats. And soon both boats were filled with fish and mm. all the watch of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he mm. fell to his nail before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, Please leave me. I'm mm -hmm. such a sinful man. Mm -hmm. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, mm -hmm. as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the son of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will be fishing for people. Hallelujah. 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 Fishing for people. Hallelujah. Here at PHH, that's what God called us to do, to fish for people, to win souls for the kingdom of God. That is our mission. Every nation touched, 
every act changed and none to be left behind. Doing this, we create a soaking womb experience every Sunday as an act of evangelism to share the love of Christ, to win souls, to bridge the gap, to feed his saints, bring hope, restoration, and joy to all. Many people have asked us, are you qualified? No. Are you pastors? No. But it's not about that. It's nothing about that. It's about complete obedience to the call of the master. Amen. It's interesting to know that Jesus called all kinds of people with different skills. Mm -hmm. He called Simon Peter, mm -hmm. Andrew, James mm -hmm. and John, who were mm -hmm. fishermen. He called Luke, who was a medical doctor. He mm -hmm. even called Matthew, the tax collector. He called Judas Iscariot, who was a treasurer, who was stealing from him, yet he was called to. So God can call anyone, but you need to be willing. Sister Natalie, how about you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And yes, friends, Jesus is calling you to, to follow him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To surrender to him. Obey him by winning souls for his kingdom. This is a command given to all believers, regardless of title. We are all called to win souls for Jesus Christ. Amen. We are all called to win souls for Christ. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, leaving everything behind and following Christ is not at all easy. We found out about that. And we read about the rich man in the Bible, right? But I pray that the Holy Spirit, it will continue to help us to be obedient and to remain obedient to him. As the first disciples did, may PHH and everyone call to PHH receive grace and to be able to leave everything behind and follow Jesus, to follow the vision and the mission that he has given us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. We have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back, if no one joins us, we will we follow if no if one don't know me, till I will follow. If no one joins me, till I will follow. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're going to move over <clears throat> to our, um, our first place. And I call on Nikke to do that for us. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't God Amen. wonderful? Irrespective of who you are, you may be a doctor, you may be whatever, you may be the least that you think Jesus can use you if only you be obedient and if only you will answer to that call. Hallelujah. And one of the person that I really like in the Bible is also David, because David know how to praise God. He know how to go in total repentance to God. He know what makes God happy is just about worship. And that's why Jesus Christ called him a man after his own heart. So you can be that person as well. If only you listen to the call and just praise God, because we're all made to worship. Hallelujah. Amen. 
when the spirit of the lord is upon my soul i will dance like david hallelujah when the spirit of the lord is upon my soul i will dance like david hallelujah i will dance i will dance i will dance like david I will dance, I will dance, I will dance like David dance. Hey, when the spirit of the Lord is up on my soul, I will clap like David clap. Come on, clap to Jesus. When the spirit of the Lord is up on my soul, I will clap like David clap. I will clap, I will clap, I will clap, I will clap like David clap. I will clap, I will clap, I will clap like David clap. Lift him up higher, 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 higher,
Whenever you hear me talk about Jesus, he is the owner of my life. Whenever you hear me talk about Jesus, he is the lover of my soul. Oh, he is the lover, he is the lover, he is the lover of my soul. He is the lover, he is the lover, he is the lover of my soul. Hallelujah. This is digital evangelism, to share the gospel, to share the good news of Christ. It's nothing about, you know, changing the message. No, the message is the same. The message is still in the word of God. It is the Bible. It is sharing it digitally so that we can reach the ends of the earth. Because the Bible says, until the gospel reaches the end of the earth, Christ will not come back. He is waiting for you, for me. Softly and tenderly, he's waiting so that he can bring everyone back to reconciliation, so that he can bring everyone back to his kingdom. So this is my experience with PHH. I've learned a lot, a lot on purpose-driven life, and it has helped my own personal life as well. And my, it has helped me to understand my purpose and my vision and my calling. I cannot but, I cannot wait. There's so much to do for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Says. You are good at a wonderful addition to PHH. We thank the Lord for bringing you through. Amen. I'm going to call on Sister Natalie, who's going to give us the journey so far for the last two years. Over to you, Sis. You're on mute. You're on mute. Sis, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. <laughs> amen, amen. Thank you all for joining us today as we mark another year in Powerhouse Our Journey. Hallelujah. This was a year of testing, but yet a year of victory as the Lord continued to be with us faithfully. Truly, our Emmanuel. We broadcasted live on Facebook our first soaking room experience on July the 5th, 2020. As our fellowship is internet based, we heavily rely on social media and encourage our listeners to subscribe to our various channels, to share our broadcast and give us likes so that the algorithm can pick up our broadcast and make us more visible on the internet with one goal, reaching souls for Christ. And this year, we're able to add short clips. So twice a week, uh, we prepare a five minutes uh, clip with the same message. Jesus is Savior. Jesus is Lord. And the concept really is to present the good news in a very short caption so that for those who are busy and not able to um, digest the whole hour, of Sunday broadcast, then they get to hear the same good news on a shorter version. We also created our in-house website, phhworld.com, where people can learn more about our vision and our mission, amen. Just to give us some data, on Facebook, as of now, we have about 180 followers and we're reaching hundreds of people every week with our broadcast. On YouTube, we have 25 subscribers and over 155 vid videos uploaded. On Instagram, we've posted about 52 posts so far, mainly of our short clips and flyers for our broadcast and events. Twitter also, we are present there and uh, where we post the link of our Sunday broadcast and clips every week. We encourage our listeners to contact us via our website, 
phhworld.com to let us know that they have made a decision for Christ. As I mentioned earlier, we have had a few bumps in the road in 2022. The first challenge is that not everyone understands or is aligned with the vision of Powerhouse Hour. Many believe that DHH is a prayer group because from the beginning, we scheduled intercessory hour on Saturdays, open to everyone who wanted to join. And we found out with time that these prayer meetings took all of our availability and commitment in detriment to the Sunday broadcast, which is the reason why PHH started. The second challenge we faced is that we listened to complaints and murmuring and grumbling about how much we are spending you know, time in our meetings on both Saturdays and Sundays. And as a result, we decided to give us one month break from Saturday meetings so we can rest. And we found out from this that most of us were not in for the vision of winning souls, but for prayers. The good thing is that we're able during that time to identify those who are committed to the vision and those are now scheduled for the Sunday broadcast. Another challenge we faced is that it's difficult to make us understand why discipline is so valuable, so important for the work that we're doing. And it's difficult to have full 100% commitment, accountability, doing things with a spirit of excellence. I can truly say that we have seen the manifestation of the scripture in Acts 5.39. But if it's, it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. These challenges were big enough to take us down, but God has been and continue to be our anchor to the amazement of everyone. So what are a few lessons that we have learned in year two? First lesson, not everyone will be on board with PHH vision to win souls for Christ. Some are just attached to PHH because of the presence of God here in our midst where they can pray for the families and themselves. Lesson number two, continue to do what God called you to do regardless of the distractions around you. This is a personal walk and there are no two journeys alike. So focus on your calling and let others focus on theirs. And lesson number three, God will always honor obedience to his vision. As we choose not to change or dilute the vision, he will always continue to use us to win souls for his kingdom. So we pray that PHH will go from glory to glory in year three of this journey. We pray for committed, accountable, teachable men and women to join us to continue to fish for souls for Jesus. And we claim the power of the third day of Jesus Christ. May everything that seems dead or dying resurrect and come alive again in Jesus' mighty name. We say yes and amen to all that God has prepared for us in year three. We celebrate in advance a successful and glorious year in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We just found out from Sister Natalie that obedience will cost you something. Sometimes it will cost you friends. It will cost you families. 
it will cost you closer ones. But like she also said, the work that we're doing, the work of the Great Commission is given to individuals. Yes, we come together as a corporate body and I always say it. But when we stand, when I stand before God at the end, it's not gonna look for Joke, Mukem, Natalie, Nikke, Lanville, Florence, uh, and everyone at PHH is going to be looking at me just as way it's going to be looking at you. And I always say, whatever commitment that we have put to PHH, it will be asking you about it. It won't be asking me. It will be asking me about my commitment, not just to PHH, to the kingdom at large. We have a few minutes and I want to take this time to just quickly say something. You are out there. There may not be an evangelism, evangelical department in your church. God created this for each and every one of us. It's digital and it reaches every home. We've seen people watching us from China, from I mean, Asian countries. We, we have them sending us some you know, messages, Nigeria, Canada, UK, Italy. So it's an open forum, you can join. You have the passion, and it, but it takes discipline. You know, it takes discipline. Believe me, it takes discipline. In the clips, Wonke was talking about me scolding and correcting. Yeah, I might get it too. I get it from everybody. It takes commitment. It takes accountability. For some of us, it's easier than others. I'm an accountant. So accountability is, is prime in my work. It takes passion. You have to have passion for the things of God, for what God hates. It's what God hates, loving what God loves. And we all know that God loves souls. He does not want any souls to perish. Like Sister Larry said, he is not coming back until we, have, until we have done everything possible, until we have done everything possible to, to let the message reach the end of the world. So this is an invitation to you. You can join us. We had three people join us last year when we did our first year anniversary. So please reach out to us and join us so that we can do this work together. If you're passionate, then you can be committed to the goals, that, to the vision that we're doing. The discipline part, we're all work in progress. Then we know we will get there. Iron sharpening iron. That's our motto here. Iron sharpening other irons in every way possible. The Lord will help us all in Jesus' name. And you don't have to be pastors. God did not call titles to PHH. We are non titled. So if you come as a pastor, yes, we accept you. But when you come to PHH, it says at the door <laughs> non titled, non religious non-traditional, unconventional, and you will have seen that by, the, by watching our broadcast. So we're gonna take like four minutes, we just you wanna get water, you wanna stretch, please do, but let's remain uh, muted, please, because we are live. So if we remain muted so that the noise will not, whatever we do will not come into the, into the page. Thank you so far for staying with us. Next, we're gonna have um, the keynote speaker come up, Reverend Emmanuel Shola King. Um, so while we're waiting, I might actually go on, say something. It's, it's an honor that he is coming on today. He is my blood brother, my senior brother by a few years. And he's been in evangelism for over 40, about 40 decades. As I was going to say, a short story about him. He became born again when he was a teenager. 
about 19, if I can remember. And I remember all of us, we laughed at him. I, I included. Oh, we laughed at him. This young guy giving his life to Jesus, SU, please leave us alone. He made one statement, and I remember, and I'm sure he, he will be shocked that I remember. He said he will not rest until every one of us has given our life. Not just giving our life, doing one thing or the other in the kingdom of God. So the glory of the God, Lord, Lord Almighty today, every one of us, even more than the ones that were in that room that day, have given our lives. And we are all ministers of God's work, one way or the other. When I went to, when I got to London, that was another order. It was always at the speaker's corner where everybody goes, every religion, Hindu, Muslim, everybody goes. You have a stool, you stand on it, and you proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. Come, give your life to Christ. Today is a chaplain for our royal majesty in the, in the prisons. I'm sure you probably tell us a little bit about it. And I'm so honored and I'm so thankful more so that he was one that brought me to Christ. So when we are for Christ, can you imagine one person in our family and he radiates round and even our own children, the next generation are catching up. May the Lord help us to be passionate about Christ because when we are passionate about Christ, he affects our household. And charity begins our own. Can you imagine every home taken for Christ? There'll be peace in the world. There'll be less killing, human trafficking, freezing yards. The Lord will help us. Um, Basho, uh, sorry, I have to call him Bashola. <laughs> Pastor Emmanuel, <laughs> whenever you're ready, please um, come up. Amen. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everyone, in, in everywhere. Good afternoon. It is a great pleasure to be on this afternoon. I was just trying to scramble to look for my tissue. I'm going to ask my wife. She's somewhere there to go and get a tissue for me because as my sister is talking, tears coming down on my face. So... And it's a pleasure to be here today. And um, what I like to say, um, my wife is getting me a tissue. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I gave my life to Christ 1981. Um, not willingly. Is <laughs> because situations and I went to hospital and then I came across Christ while I was in hospital after an operation and here I am today 1981 40 years ago and as my sister was speaking I realized one thing that's done on me is intercession interceding for families, interceding for our nations. And um, I was teaching yesterday and I was saying, because I was teaching on end times, I do that every Saturday, every Saturday, I teach on end times every Saturday. And then um, for the past two years, nonstop. And then um, I discovered that Noah never intercede for the world when God wants to destroy the world. Noah never interceded at all. Abraham did, Moses did, but Noah didn't. So intercession is very powerful. And I remember, yes, I was the only one in the family who gave my life to Christ. They think I was way out there, <laughs> but I was interceding, praying that everyone around me would give their life to Christ. I even remember I went back one time and one of my sisters said, you've thrown your Bible into the ocean. I said, Jesus will find it for me. And Jesus did. Um, so 
you know, being a Christian, I've been fortunate not to be just uh, being in church. I've always been on the street, reaching out to souls. And it has sharpened my Christian life because I've seen the outworking of the Holy Spirit. And um, so definitely, I believe each one of us has a call of God upon our lives. There's no question about it. Each one of us have a call of God upon our lives. Um, um, I remember that uh, before I gave my life to Christ, I used to organize all these parties on the beach and you know, trying to bring people together. I didn't realize that's a God's gift to me. And that's what I do now. I bring people together. <laughs> so things that comes naturally to you might be your gift from God. You can do some research into that, reflect and think about it. And you must have discovered that now there's some gift that comes naturally to you as a child, when you're growing up as a teenager, they're a gift from God that Satan corrupted. <laughs> could be very social, could be very bubbly, and see so you're the life of the party. Yes, you are, you used to be, but now you're the life of God's party. <laughs> and, um, you know, I went to see um, a lady um, on Wednesday. Her husband invited me to go to the speaker's corner. She's 80 now. I was with her on Wednesday. I placed it on the Facebook. It's on, my, it's on the Facebook. And her husband just introduced, said, hey, man, would you like to come with me to speaker's corner? Come and see what I do. Boy, not realizing that was a divine event. A divine event. I got to speak as Connor. Before then, boy, oh boy, I do pray for souls, but when he said, let's go and win souls, I ran a mile. <laughs> when I was in deeper life, when I was in regime in Nigeria, if I say, let's go out for souls, I didn't feel confident to do that. I just ran a mile. But this guy took me to speak as corner after church. When we go there, he said, would you like to preach? I said, no way. Then he didn't force me. And he just started putting up his chair, his stood that he wanted to stand on. And guess what? As soon as the guy stood on that chair to preach, something came upon me like a clock. And I couldn't wait for him to get off to start preaching. Now, later on, I realized that's the anointing of God. For 10 years, I was on speaker's corner, speaking every Sunday. And not just speaker's corner, Leicester Square, Candem Town, Kibon High Street, you might not know all these places, Covent Garden, Travaga Square. I was taking people with me even some family members come with me to speak at Corner, where we have head on collusion with other religions, other belief systems. And um, but another thing happened again. One day I've just finished preaching and on my way to church. And I heard this audible voice call my name, said, Emmanuel, I want you to start going to church and to prison for me. I've never been in prison. <laughs> but guess what? I have a lot of emotional baggages that can easily take you to prison. <laughs> but guess what? I got to church 45 minutes later, I was asked, to lead the prison ministry. That is an amazing, 45 minutes later, and I'm still leading that prison ministry up to today, 33 years later. So my preaching engagement started publicly, publicly, 1984, privately, 1981, interceding, talking to my sisters, talking to my family, that was private. 
for public place 1984. So what I would like to share with you, apart from my personal testimony, uh, is about faithfulness and persistency. Faithfulness and, and, and about persistency. Um, 33 years later, I was invited yesterday, a few weeks ago, to speak to Redeemed Church of God in South Africa to 12 nations. And that is 33 years later. Who will have known that a call 33 years ago will lead to me speaking to 12 nations, even broadcast across the world, because it was broadcast across the world. It's not, it's not just 12 nations training them about crazy ministry in South Africa. That was yesterday. And who will have known that 40 years later, my sister will be inviting me to speak on her behalf for the work God has started in her life. Who will have known that? Only God. Only God can do things like that. And that, that, that brings me to a point where we say, never give up. Persist, continue in what God has called you. If you are sure that God has called you, then you need to persist. You need to develop yourself. You need to train yourself. You need to expose yourself to other like minded people, order like-minded people. Like somebody said, iron sharpen irons. I don't hang around a lot of people and I will tell you that. I don't have many friends. The only friends I have are those who are Christ focused. I don't have many friends. Anything that is not Christ-orientated, I'm not involved. <laughs> I do socialize, don't get me wrong. Ask my wife, extreme extrovert. <laughs> I do socialize a lot. But I only hang around people on the, my association depends on whether you are committed to Christ. Of course, I reach out to people who are not believers. But when we talk about spending quality time, I do that with people who want to go and do great things for God. It is very, very important. And I have my own private soaking, <laughs> Holy Ghost soaking. Very, very important. But I'd like to share some scripture with you, okay? Some scripture with you. And then, you know, another thing I'd like to tell you is that because when you are focused, God can trust you with more. When you are focused, God can trust you with more. Seven years ago, God, I was teaching again, and God spoke to me the same way he spoke to me in 1989. Again, he called my name. He said, Emmanuel, I want you to train 500 people for me. Who am I? <laughs> I'm just this from a very small village. But the God of heaven is calling my name and is trusting me to train people for him. That is amazing thought. The one that threw the galaxy, that creates everything, the one that knows us in and out, come down to my level and said, Emmanuel, can you train 500 people for me? And confirmation has been upon confirmation. <laughs> And that is talking about faithfulness, persistency, and 100% reliance on God. 
hundred percent reliance on God because we can not do it ourselves. It is impossible. It is impossible. And God, you know, the people we are going, we are going to reach, they have been damaged. They have been corrupted. They have been abused. You know, I was abused as a child in boarding school by a pedophile for five years. Mommy died when I was 15, rejected by family, rejected by my own father who said, I wish you are dead and your brother is alive. These are serious rejections, but God specialized in taking a mess up life and turning it into a message. That is the power of God. So we don't live in unforgiveness. We don't live in bitterness. We don't live in the past. We don't live a victim mindset, but we become victors, overcomers, and going forward in Christ. So when God calls us, he wants us to reach out to people that we can identify with, people that we can have empathy, compassion, because of what he has done in our lives, and we can be gentle and kind and sweet to other people. And then can I also say that you are on the right track because this, the movement of God now, it has nothing to do with titles. Why? This is the time for the body of Christ to do great exploits. Not fivefold ministries. The role of the fivefold ministries is to train and to develop and to equip the body of Christ to do the work of the ministry and not to monopolize a pulpit. This is the work. This is where we are today. This is where we are today. This is the day and a great opportunity for the body of Christ to do the work of the ministry. You know, there's a scripture uh, I want to share with you. I'm not sure what I have opportunity. Let me see. They can minimize and I can read it for you. Um, that scripture in, um, is in um, Matthew 25, 35 to 44. It said, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty. You gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me with help and ministering care. Ministering care. Remember this, I was taught this when I was in Bible school. People doesn't care how much you know. People want to know how much you care, then they want to know how much you know. Remember that. I was in prison and you came to you came to me, ignoring personal danger. Look at that. Ignoring personal danger. Then the righteous we we, we answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you as a stranger and invited you in or naked and clothed you? And when did we see you sick? I'm looking at the time. See you sick or in prison you came to you. The king will answer them. The king will answer and say to them, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, to the extent that you did it for one of these brothers, of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. That is Matthew 
1925, 35 to 40. Another scripture I'd like to leave with you before I finish, because my time is running out. He said, this is uh, Acts 26, 16 to 18. Acts 26, 16 to 18. And this is God speaking to Paul. He said, get her and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you for this purpose. I heard about the purpose-driven life. I have appeared to you for this purpose. To appoint you to serve as a minister and as a witness to testify with authority not only to the things which you have seen, but also to the things in which I will appear to you. Choosing you for myself and rescuing you from the Jewish people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you to open their spiritual eyes, so that they may turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness and release from their sins and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified, set apart, made holy by faith in me. How powerful is that? And I want to leave you with these words. You know, somebody said, the world without prayer creates dryness. And prayer without the world can lead to been blown up. Say, without the world, you dry up. Without the, without the spirit, without the world, you dry up. Without the spirit, you dry up. And without the spirit, you get blown up. But the combination of the spirit and the world, you grow up. Prayer is important, but reaching out is also important. They are both two sides of a coin. May God bless you. Have a great day. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Two words I heard. I, um, I think there was a third one. Consistency and faithfulness. And that is, um, those are words that we use at PHH. I'm glad um, that you went over there. I can't remember the third one. We'll, we'll all go over. What we do, we'll go over the video together and, and then you know, so that we can plan for next year. And I believe the Lord will help us. Thank you so much, um, Pastor. The Lord bless you and continue to anoint you for greater eyes in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for taking that first step because because of you, many are on the same path this day. And because of you, I can say like, I came to Christ and see what God is doing. Who would have known? You're a Yavo. This is, <laughs> we thank God. Thank you so very much. Amen. Amen. We're going to go into um, um, a section of worship. And this is just to give thanks to God. Um, I was telling um, some of the members that we escaped the Edward, the two years, the Edwardian two years um, syndrome, whereby he tried to kill Jesus. Like Sir Natalie's narrated, we, we went through so much challenges that could have taken us down. If it has not been the Lord on our side, I don't know whether we'll be here this afternoon. But you see, I have a passage that I read. Lamentations 337 says, Who has spoken and it came to pass? Unless, unless the Lord has commanded it. Who has spoken? And it came to pass. Unless Jehovah 
has commanded it. Hallelujah. Today is a day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and we are rejoicing and we'll be glad in it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Worship along with me. I always say worship is individual. You may not know the songs, but worship in your own environment. My job is to take us to the presence of God. Yours is to put yourself in the atmosphere, reaching out to the master to receive from him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jehovah Shammah. I see you everywhere. Blessed with the mouth. Your glory fills the earth. Everlasting daddy. The one who watches me. I put my confidence in Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Shammah, I see you everywhere. Blessed with the mind, your glory fills the earth. Everlasting Father, the one who watches me, I put my confidence. In Jehovah Shammah, your grace and mercy have brought us through. We live in this moment only because of you. I want to thank you. And praise you too. Your grace and mercy brought us through. If it has not been the Lord on PHS side, ha, Baba. Your grace and mercy have brought us through. We are living this moment only because of you. We want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace, your grace and mercy have brought us through. You are a great God. You are a great God. You are a great and mighty God. That's all I know. You've been a great God. You've been a faithful God. You've been a protecting God. That's all I know. You are who you are yesterday, today, and forevermore. What you say is what you do. You never change. You never fail. You are faithful to the end. Faithful God, I worship you. I worship you. You are who you are yesterday, today, and forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. What you said is what you have done. You've never felt. And you will never change, Jehovah. You are faithful to the end. You are too faithful to fail me. 
You are too faithful to disappoint us. You've proven yourself in our midst. And now we have realized you are too faithful to fail us. Kabasima teka ababa. Hey, you are too faithful to fail us. At PHH, Karima Seka Yama. Hey, you are too faithful to disappoint us. You are proving yourself in our life. And now we are not. Hey, you are too faithful to fail us. You are too faithful to fail us. Your goodness is running. It's running around us. His goodness is running. It's running after us. With our lives laid down, Papa we surrender all. We give you everything, Lord. Your goodness is running. It's running after us. Your goodness is running. It's running after us. With our lives laid down, we surrender all. We give you everything, Lord. Your goodness is running, it's running after us. Hallelujah. His goodness amongst us. His presence every time, tangible. We can, it's like we can touch him. Come and sit down. Stand. I stand in all of you. I stand, I stand, Lord. I stand in all of you. Oh, holy God, to all PHH praises due, we stand in all of you. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You are a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You are a faithful God. Awesome is your name. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you in all the earth. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome. Awesome is your name. Hallelujah. Is everybody ready to light the candle for the world to see? Hallelujah. Oh, don't mess me up this day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We want to light our candle for the world to see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a candle in every soul, some burning brightly, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire. Ignites a candle and makes it so. Carry your candle, run to the darkness. Seek out the helpless, 
confused and torn. Oh, that your can do and go like the wolf. Take your candle and go light the wolf. Frustrated brother, see how he try to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to. She seals a candle without a flame. So carry your candle, run to the darkness. Seek out the lonely, the tired and worn. And all that your candle forward to see. Take your candle and go light the world. Cause we are family whose hearts are blazing. So let's raise our candles and light the sky. Pray to our Father in the name of Jesus. Make us a beacon in darkness signs. Go light your candle, run to the darkness. Seek out the hopeless, deceived and poor. Hold out your candle for all to save. Take your candle and go light the world. Hallelujah. PHH, take out your candle and go light the world. The spirit of the Lord is upon us. He's chosen us to preach the message of good news to the poor. Sent us to announce pardon to the, to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind. To set the burden and the battle free. To announce this is God's time to shine. You are here to be light. Bring it out that God's colors in the old white world. Now that I've put you, this is what the word of God says to me to tell you. Now that I've put you there on the hilltop, on the light stand, shine. Go light your candle for the world to see. Iabo, Natalie, Larry, Joker, Beauty, Wonker. Daddy, Florence, everyone at PHH, go light your candle for the world to see it in Jesus, Matthias, holiest and awesome name we have worshipped. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Papa. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. I light up my candle. Hallelujah. Jesus in me, the hope of glory. He is my light. And I pray that today he will become your light as well as you allow him to become your own personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. The message unto you. I give it recorded in his word. Hallelujah. 
if only that you know. Eli, look Eli, my brotherly, look to Jesus now, Eli, it's recorded in his Hallelujah, if only you will look at Have a message full of love. Hallelujah, a message, oh my friend, for you. It's a message from above. Hallelujah. Jesus said it and I know it is true. Look at me, my sister Lee. Look to Jesus Christ and it's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. If only that you look at me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And friends, just like Jesus called the 12 disciples in Matthew 4, he's calling you. He's calling me. Hallelujah. Today to come and follow him. Hallelujah. Matthew 4, 19. Jesus called out to them. Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people hallelujah and they left their nets at once and followed him they immediately followed him leaving the boats and their father behind and friends i don't know what is holding you back but they will lose nothing following christ on the contrary we gain everything we gain peace we gain joy that comes from above most important, importantly, we gain eternity, eternal life with him. Hallelujah. We have the assurance that when this life is over, we will dwell with our heavenly father forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. This is the gift of salvation. This is the plan of God. Hallelujah. That when we were even sinners that Christ came and paid the price. He went to the cross for you and me. He paid it all that we may gain it all, life eternal with him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Life is offered unto you. Hallelujah. Eternal life your soul shall have. If you only look to him, hallelujah, look to Jesus who alone can say, look and leave my brotherly Look to Jesus now, Eli, if it's recorded in his word, hallelujah, if only that you look, Eli, I will tell you how I feel. Hallelujah to Jesus when he made me whole. Twice believing on his name. Hallelujah. 
I trust in and he said, my soul, look at my sister Lee. Look to Jesus now and it's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. If only that you look and Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, if only you will look and live today. And friends, hallelujah. If you've, you haven't made your decision, hallelujah, to Christ, if you haven't surrendered your life to him yet, this is your invitation. Today, you can be sure, hallelujah. Today, you can be sure that when this life is over, you will be in the everlasting arm of our heavenly father. Hallelujah. And if you're ready, please pray this word after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, today I've heard your invitation and my answer is yes. Come into my life. Be my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for the sacrifice that you have given us, given me on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for paying the price that I may be saved. Hallelujah. Today, I choose, just like Peter chose, I choose to follow you. Follow after you, wherever you lead me, I will go. Thank you, Holy Spirit, come and teach me how to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's in his holy name that we have prayed. Amen and amen. And friends, if you pray this prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God, where you have many brothers and sisters, and we ask that you will find a Bible teaching church in your community, that you'll be connected, hallelujah, that you will sign up for courses, discipleship courses, hallelujah, that you may grow in the knowledge of this Jesus that you have surrendered to today. Hallelujah. We are PHH. Thank God for you, for your life. Amen. But go and do the work of an evangelist as well. Share this video with your friends, with your family, with your colleagues, your co-workers, hallelujah, that this good news will be spread to the four corners of the world. Thank you. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Amen. These are the days of Elijah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. These are the days of Elijah. Declaring the word of the Lord. These are the days of his son, Moses, righteousness being restored. Though these are the days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sorrow, Still we hear the voice in the desert, crying, preparing the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, 
shining like the sun, and the trumpets go, lift your hearts, the year of Jubilee, out of sight of These are the days of Ezekiel. The dry bones become flesh. These are the days of your servant. David rebuilt in a temple of praise. These are the days of the Amen. Yes, Lord. The fields are so as you were. And we are the little Your being, your declaring the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the cloud, shining like the sun, and the trumpets go, and my sick Alibaba, is the year of Jubilee, and of Zion, Zion, come. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Hallelujah. Oh Lord, you are the soul winner by excellence. You are the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the great I am, the beginning, the very end. Hallelujah. The author and finisher of my faith, my great shepherd, my all in all, and I worship you. Hallelujah. Yeah. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the Rose of Sharon, the Lion of Judah. You are the I am that I am. You are the only God that make it way where there seem to be no way. There is nobody that can ever be like you. You are seated in heaven and the earth is your footstool. Forever and ever, you will continually be God. Father, you are my comforter. You are my all in all. There is no one like you. Indeed, there's nobody like Jehovah. I worship you, Lord, and I just give you praise. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You are the Yahweh of Israel. You are the governor general of the, all the nations. You are the righteous God, the kind God, the faithful God, the good God. You are the king, you are the judge, you are the redeemer, the savior, you are dependable, you are reliable, you are consistent, you are faithful, you are lawyer, God, you are unstoppable, you are an awesome God, you are unchangeable, and you are the ageless God. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Amen. You are the king of the universe. You are the breath of all mankind. You alone are God. You don't need any man to be the God that you are. 
but you have chosen to call us your own. We are grateful unto you. We are grateful unto you, Rock of Ages. We worship your majesty. You alone reign supreme. You alone are God. I have searched through all eternity and I've found that there is no other God like you. There is no other one beside you. You alone I worship. You alone I praise. You alone I give all the glory. I give all the adoration with all of my existence, with everything that makes me who I am. I worship you. My yesterday, my today, my tomorrow. I worship you from everlasting to everlasting. You are my God. I worship you. Hallelujah. Amen. The battle stopper, unquestionable God, Jehovah Shekinah, mighty one in battle, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, a mighty man of valor, miracle worker, rock of ages. You are the merciful God, the advocate. You are always doing wonders. Your words are yea and amen. You are the answer to prayers, the intercessor, the interceptor, the barming Gilead, the relentless God. You are the voice of hope. You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words. You are the alpha and the omega. You are the game changer. You are a refuge, our fortress, our buckler, our banner, the strong tower, the unchangeable changer, the rose of Sharon. You are all in all. You are the pillar of our lives. You are the firstborn. You are the lamb that was slain, the glory and the lifter of our heads. Hallelujah unto your name. Glory, glory, glory unto you, O Lord. Amen. Father, you have been my strength, the wind beneath my wings. You have been my strong tower, a strong help, my go to person, dependable. Father, I worship you. You go before me on every side. You are my defender. You, you are my God, my Alpha, my Omega, my beginning my end, everlasting to over. The great I am, the I am that I am, the lion, the tribe of Judah. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. You are the exceeding greatness in my life, my anchor, my solid rock. You are God all by yourself. Worship you this afternoon. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you all adoration in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Oh, we want to say thank you to everyone that joined us on the Zoom and everyone that was watching us uh, online, live, and for everyone that will watch us later. We are PHH, Powerhouse Hour. And our focus is drawing souls to the kingdom of God. I pray that you have been tangibly blessed. This is how we have it every Sunday between 3 and 4 p.m. In Jesus' name. So next week, we look forward to seeing you in the name of Jesus Christ. And please help us to share our broadcast. If you think there's anyone who is who is going to need it, anyone that needs to hear about Christ, please share. We're on Zoom. We're, we're on the, um, on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on YouTube. Hallelujah. And then we have a website, www.phhworld.com. You can reach out to us, and one of us will get to you. We're really blessed that you have joined us. Thank you. I don't know about you, but I know I felt the presence of God in our midst this afternoon. And I know that the Lord is awesome and continues to be awesome in our midst. Hallelujah. And we have a closing air song that we sing to him just to let him know how awesome he is, how wonderful, how mighty he has been in our midst. Hallelujah. You are awesome in this place. Almighty God, 
You'll be no some in a Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. Do you allies we win? You'll be no some in this place. Almighty God. As we come into your presence, as the gates of grace, into your sanctuary, you will stand the face to face. Look upon your countenance, and we see the fullness of your grace. He can only bow down and say, and say, you've been awesome in this place, almighty God, hallelujah. You've been awesome in this place, our Father. You were wise. Do you allies we raise? You've been awesome, wonderful, glorious, faithful, everlasting. You are Jehovah, Elohim, Adonai. You've been awesome in this place. Oh my, see God. Hallelujah. The Lord has been awesome in our midst. Glory, honor to his name. Again, thank you for joining us. We look forward to you joining us at PHH, and then we look forward to joining you us when we come on live next week in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. May the Lord be with you. May he bless you. May he cause his face to continue to shine upon you. May you give you peace and give you rest. And may you cause this word to work on your behalf. When you call one, may hundred call in the mighty name. May hundred answer you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Happy anniversary once again. Oh, thank you, Bashala. Thank you. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you for coming. We love you. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, God Pastor bless King. You. The Lord bless you. Thank God you. Bless you too. Thank you, sir. Uh, God bless I you. I thoroughly enjoy your skit, your drama. <laughs> Oh. It's beautiful. 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 Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, so Thank you for much. coming. God bless you. Sure. Keep up the good work. I'm proud of it. It's lovely. It's beautiful. Thank you. And uh, okay, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna borrow you from Yabo. 